I'm saying is I'll be keeping a very close eye on the management of the stud from now on. I see. Any particular reason? I don't trust the new manager. With the horses? Or...? With the horses. Are you quite sure? All right, I'll tell you, though. I think he's just your pawn. You hired him while I was away simply to make trouble. Chris, you've been completely paranoid. I gave him the job because he is clearly capable of doing it, and everything I've seen so far bears me out. Well, I beg to differ. This isn't about horses, is it? You're just jealous because your little tart seems to have taken a fancy to him. <sighs> Not true. And frankly, I think that says more about her than it does about Andrew. Will any of your personal feelings cloud your business judgment, Chris? Just leave Andrew alone, OK? Morning. Snitch. How did you chicken out? Police never showed up. Yes, they did. Sergeant Reynolds came. Well, I never saw her. So you did call them, then? Yes. When I say I'm going to do something, I do it. I wouldn't boast about that if I were you. What about calling the cops? I don't think the dad would be too pleased to know that one dingle put the cops onto another. Do you? Quite apart from the fact that I might give you a good smack if you ever do that again. Well, I had to put the money up front for materials. It's normal practice, isn't that? Poor lad, he won't cough up. Oh, yes, he will. You tell me what you want and I'll get it out of him. What's going on with you two? Nothing. Emily? Nothing, Mr Dingle. Sorry to butt in. I was hoping to find Zoe. Well, you have to get here earlier than this if you want to catch her. She left for work hours ago. Yes, well, I've been up since four this morning myself. Problems? Yeah, one of the mares. I thought she was going to fall last night, but nothing's happened so far and she's not looking good. I'd like Zoe to take a look at her. I'm sorry I haven't been up to see you, but I've got to stay off farms as much as possible. Yeah, I know. Spread of foot and mouth. I guess the TB test pales into insignificance compared with all that's going on at the moment. I know, it's terrible. Oh, so he would have time to be selling the farm. Jack's selling the farm? He wants to. The sign went up last week. We can forget about that. Nobody's going to be buying farms till this is all over. Does that mean he thinks he's going to be sent down? I think he just wanted to make sure that if anything did happen, he... They're not going to find him guilty. I can't believe that Jack's a murderer. He's not. It's just a terrible mistake. Hi, Virginia. Andrew says it's really urgent you get up here. He thinks that mayor of Jim Marshall's may have done herself an injury. We might end up losing both her and the foal. OK, I'm on my way. I've got to go, Cathy. I'm sorry. I think I'll go mad if I get quarantined up there. It hasn't happened yet. You haven't been to market and you've had no new animals arriving. You have a better chance than most of staying clear. I'll find you later. Just dump it here, Jason. Right, cool. Yeah? Yeah. Good night. How's it going? Oh, all right, but they're waiting on you. We need sand and cement and stuff, Eric, for the floor. Plumbing? Said you were going to do that today. Well, get what is needed and build me for it. That won't do. She's not laying out your own money on this. You've got to put some money up front. I haven't got any money, Eric. That's all there is to it. How much do you need? Five hundred. Three hundred pounds. The sand and cement. <laughs> Pipes. Plumbing materials. I'll tell you what, you give me the list, I'll sort out the plumbing stuff. Meanwhile, here's... £50 for the sand and cement. I need plumbing stuff today, Eric. I'll make sure it's here later this morning. Tight fish they don't get. What's the matter, don't he trust us? Well, I think you might have been a bit ambitious, Zach. What do you expect if you ask for 500 quid? Well, give me that 50 quid, I'll go down to the yard. Uh, no, no, my love. Uh, I know a place where I can get a good deal. Uh, you stay here. Spend a couple of hours with Bell. What's the matter with you? Nothing. You're always going on about how I don't help. So now I'm helping. Don't mind if I borrow Jason for a couple of hours. Oh, do you have to? I could use him here. On second thoughts, you better go with him. Keep an eye on him. Make sure he comes straight back. I will. 
Hey, Zach, you sure you want me to come with you? I think lads at Yard are giving hand on this. Shh, just get in, will you? We're not going to no builder's yard. Do you think I'm going to pay good money for sand and cement when I know a site where I can pick it up for free? All right. Andrew? That was all good. What's wrong? One of Jim Marshall's mares. I thought she was going into labour last night. Then it all quietened down. Then about an hour ago, she broke out into a terrible sweat. Started flinging herself about the stall. I'm afraid she might have ripped to the gut. And what about the foal? Oh, the foal's fine. Beautiful colt. Just been getting some colostrum in from the freezer to feed him. But his mum's in a bad way. Right, I'll take a look. I could ring him. What do you reckon? If you want to. I just think that looks forward. Might be better if he rang you. Yeah, you're right. I don't want him to think I'm running after him. I don't think you should send him a card either. I'm not going to. No, he can stew. You're absolutely right. Massive internal bleeding. I'm going to have to put her down. I thought so. He did well to deliver the foal safely. She could have killed with all that thrashing about. Out of me fear. Your only challenge now is to find a suitable foster mum. Yes, I've already asked Virginia to phone a few people and post a message on the internet. Well, you don't waste any time. Hey. You were late last night. Me? Yeah, about two on it when you come home. Dunno. Could have been. Yeah, it was. Ten to two. I heard you come in. How long's this coffee been made? Oh, a while. I'll make you some fresh. It's all right. I'll do it. Does it work? Kept you out that late? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Hmm. Something excited. Len, I don't like talking about work at home. All oh, right. I thought your shift ended about ten. For goodness sake, anybody think I was fifteen the way you two carry on? All right. All right. You know that driving lesson we talked about? I think now might be a good time. Oh, yeah, yeah, OK. Your friend Harry Phillips put me in touch with a woman called Elise Thompson. She's a private owner with a single mare that gave birth to a stillborn foal just two days ago. Where does she live? Uh, not far from here, somewhere near Harrogate. I phoned her, but she's not in, so I left a message. It'd be fantastic if it worked out. Yeah. So, I've got to phone Jim. Why don't you come through? Oh, uh, Chris is in the... Oh, morning, Christopher. Didn't know you were here. What were you doing here? I told you I was going to keep an eye on things. I hear there's been another cock-up. It wasn't a cock-up. These things happen. Oh, it'd be interesting to see if Jim Marshall agrees with you. Have you told him yet? Not yet. I've not time. Maybe that's the woman with the mare. I'll see if he's available. Can I ask who's calling? Nicola Blackstock wants to talk to you urgently. Tell her I'm in a meeting. I always find it's a good idea to keep my love life separate from my work. That's exactly what I am doing. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll get back to the fall. You have a nerve. You're the last person who should be lecturing someone on keeping his personal life apart from his business. My personal life doesn't result in the death of someone else's bloodstock. Neither does his. It was nothing to do with that girl or anyone else that Jim's mare died. Andrew was up half the night with that horse. But you just... You're just too much when you stick your knife into somebody. Hello? Oh, hello, Mrs Thompson. You got a message? Yes. Yes. Can you? Because we can send a horse box over. Well, that's very kind of you. Looks like we've got a mother for the foal. Time for cautious optimism. Let's just hope they take to each other. I always feel like I've done a good morning's work if I get something for free. <laughs> Nothing's for free if you got to put all that effort into getting it. I spent all morning digging it into the bags. Plus all that looking over our shoulder to make sure no one's seen us. Oh, stop mithering. You're a different breed, you are. Now, you know... Hmm? See, uh, Sugden's Farm's up for sale, Alan? Yes, yes, I heard. Who do you think will buy that, then? Or for some developer, I should think. Aye, ah, 
Yeah, that's the way it's going. Yeah, right. There's no money in farming. It's all executive homes and golf courses these days. Uh, hey, so we best be off. At least we'll be doing a nut. Oh, are you right? Uh. <laughs> no rest for the wicked. <laughs> Listen, I'm uh, sorry I snapped at you earlier. Oh, that's all right. You've got a lot of your play. So, how did the driving lesson go? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, he's doing nicely. I was back and forth, shall I, shan't I? But then in the end, I did phone him. But you said you weren't going to. Well, I know, but you've got to be blocks like him, haven't you? He's ever so busy at that stud farm. Don't have time to think about women. That's why he doesn't have a steady girlfriend. Can you just hang on a minute? I want to talk to someone. Oh, fine, OK. Shall I get you a drink? Uh, yes, please, sir. Just an orange juice. I've got to get back to work. That third roundabout, the little one in the road. <laughs> in any came to grief. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because it looked like a T junction. But apart from that, it was fun. Sergeant Reynolds? Yeah? I'm really sorry to disturb you off duty, Sergeant Reynolds. But what happened last night? Kane said he never saw you. No, I didn't see him either. He probably saw my squad car and pushed off. All right. Well, that's all right then. He's not giving you a hard time, is he, Emily? No. Nothing I can't handle. So, what about you? Still haven't heard from Ed? No. Hmm, it's a shame, that is. You should put an ad in the local paper, you know, like, where are you now? Oh, isn't it paper so everybody can see? I hmm, wouldn't have to say it for you. You could give a box number. What would I say? Aren't you wanted in the kitchen? I thought you were supposed to be working. Yeah, I am. I'm going. Well, I suppose I'd better be off as well. I said I'd look in on that lad at the garage. See you later. Oh, do you know what time you'll be back? No, I don't. Oh. Afternoon? Not in here. Why? There's nothing wrong with passing the time of day, is there? I think you're on the back in five minutes. What time of day do you call this, Zach Dingle? Sorry, sorry, Lisa Love, but we have brought you the best builder's sham this side of Leeds. Go all the way to the beach to get it, did you? <laughs> and I don't know what you're laughing at. The only reason I sent you with it was to keep an eye so this sort of thing wouldn't happen. Otherwise, I'd have kept you here instead of which I've been slaving away on my own all morning while you two been gadding about doing precisely nothing. Where'd you get the sand? Uh, well, that's the thing. The first couple of yards we went to didn't have none. Don't give me that sack, Dingle. One of these days you'll be the death of me and then you'll both be sorry because what he gets up towards you and pay your wages. Whoa, whoa! Well, this is a good hiding place. I bet no one can see us here. I must be mad doing this. About time you're a bit mad, if you ask me. You don't understand, do you? I've got a family and a career. Yeah. But everyone likes a bit of excitement. Are you trying to tell me it's all over? No. No, not here. Well, where then? Cricket Pavilion, six o'clock. You better show. And I love you, Sergeant. <laughs> Hello. Andrew Fraser, I'm the stud manager. Oh, hi, I'm Elise Thompson. And this must be Opal. Yeah, she's a really nice mare, very good natured, but she doesn't like travelling much, do you, my sweet? We're very grateful to you for loaning her to us. I just hope she takes to the cult. She was so sad when her own died. Are you a beauty? You are, aren't you? Are you the person I spoke to on the phone? Yes, Virginia. Virginia West. You said there'd be a free cover in return for the loan. Yes, that's right. Isn't it, Andrew? Definitely, of course. Great. It's so expensive paying stud fees. Well, we've got two very good stallions here. You're welcome to use whichever you want. Now, if you'd like to lead this lady into the stable, give her some warm mash, I think we should settle her in before introducing her to the fall. Yeah. Hey, is it OK if I stay and watch when they're introduced? Only I've read about fostering, but I've never seen it done. 
Of course, we can't thank you enough for helping us out like this. My pleasure. Describe him. Tall, fair hair. Oh, no, no, no. His character. Well, he knows about the stars and the weather and... OK. So how about Stargazer from Houghton? Please contact beautiful young widowed postmistress. I miss you. That sounds daft. I'll never know it's me from that. I'm not beautiful. You are? I'm not. I don't want him thinking I think I am. And I'm not a postmistress either. OK, I give up. You write it. Ed. We met at the spiritualist meeting in Otten. I'd like to see you again. Please get in touch. Your friend, Emily. Hmm. OK, that it? Shall I phone it in? What do you mean right now? Well, yeah, you do want it put in the paper. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't want anybody to know it's me. Why not? Well, I don't want folk thinking I'm running after him. Oh, you're not running after him. You've just lost touch and you want to find him again. I'll be back in half an hour. Stay in there with him, keep Wobble on a rain. Does that mean she might still turn on him? Hmm. Well, she could still turn. We won't know she's taken to him for a couple of days. Someone's gonna have to stay with him all night tonight. Will you be doing that? Can I stay up with you? Well, I wasn't going to, but if you're going to stay, then that changes everything. How's it going? So far, so good. We're just gonna have a drink in the office. Qualified celebration. Can I join you? Sure. It's open. How did you get in? Well, the door was unlocked. Really? I thought we'd be a bit more private inside. Yeah, well, that's true. I could lose my job, you know, just by being here with you. I know. Breaking and entering, no <laughs> trespass. It's not funny, Kane. <laughs> I know that. You're here, aren't you? Yeah. I'm here. You know... You can end it any time you want. No one's forcing you. I don't want to end it. But... Yeah? We have to be really, really careful. If this gets out, if, if my kids find out that we're devastated, my career will be finished and... I don't even know if I can trust you. You can't. I don't even trust myself. <laughs> well, what sort of an answer is that? Here I am looking for reassurance. Are you? I don't think so. It's not reassurance you want from me. You went wild last night. And that's why you're here today. Yes? Or oh, no? Yes. Good. So long as we've got that sorted. What time have you been here all this time? Of course not. I went away and came back. You know something? You're like a complacent vulture sitting there, waiting for the kill. Ah, the kill's already happened. Has Andrew spoken to Jim yet? He wasn't in earlier. I think he's speaking to him now. You mean he hasn't told him yet? I mean, what sort of manager's that? 
He tried to get him earlier. Jim wasn't available. Well, if I were Jim, I'd know what I'd do. There'd be a fleet of horse boxes here first thing in the morning. Don't say that. It would finish us. Then I'd get my lawyers on to it to see if there was a case for negligence. Looks like your friend Andrew might be going the same way as poor old Adam. That's what you want, isn't it? That's nothing you like, Betty. You don't care about the stud. All you want is a stick to beat Andrew with. Elise, come in. This is my brother, Chris. Chris, Elise is the owner of the mare that's fostering the orphaned foal. Pleased to meet you. Hello. Well, I appreciate you saying that, Jim. I look forward to it. Good luck. <sighs> oh, goodness, that's okay. Now, is there anything else? Oh, just your little friend Nicola Blackstock. She's called three times today. Oh, no. <laughs> what do you expect? If you will run after innocent young girls. Innocent? Nicola Blackstock? And I did not run after her, she ran after me. Is that what you said about me? No, of course not. <laughs> Looks like this one's not going to take no for an answer. No, and I do not need another interruption at this stage of the proceedings. Look, you deal with that. Tell her I'll see you tomorrow. Supper? Yeah, whatever. Hello. Oh, hello, Nicola. Yeah, no, but he left a message. I got to the gym at last. And what did he say? He took it in his stride. He knew Megan was getting on. This was to have been her last falling. He's happy that the fall survived. Well, that's a relief. So, Chris, you're going to join us in congratulating Andrew? Getting through his first big test as stud manager? I can see in the circumstances it would be ungracious to say anything, but yes, so well done. Thank you. I'd like to propose a toast to a successful fostering. Successful, successful fostering. fostering. And a successful and prosperous future for the home farm stood. The home, the home farm, farm stood. stood.